Alright, Pexto, how a final video determines a legacy. You might have noticed these two videos on your homepage recently. Tom Scott and Matt Pat, with over 6 million and 40 million subscribers respectively, both stepping down at what could be described as the height of their careers. But what is the difference between this response and this response? I think this channel is pretty much officially dead. Tom Scott has been on the platform for what seems like an eternity, uploading a video on pretty much any topic you could think of. He rose to fame through his innovative content, such as showing how colors are unable to be recorded accurately on video, a compact hovercraft, and how bear-resistant infrastructure is tested. Doing so has gained him over 6 million subscribers and nearly 2 billion views. Jesus. But all good things must come to an end. After a decade of consistent weekly uploads, Tom Scott uploaded his final video on January 1st, 2024, where he announced that he's taking a break from YouTube. As this became my life, I decided that my goal was 10 years. And that is today, as this is published, 4 p.m., January the 1st, 2024. Scott predicted difficult years ahead with the rise of zero-effort AI channels but he knew exactly when to step back from the spotlight. I did think that I should end this with a big, syrupy, sentimental, self-indulgent montage and head off This was like, he, he had like the domino effect, right? It was like he did it, and then afterwards it was just, everybody was like, yeah, I think it might be me next. Yeah, I think it might be me next. Fucking even Jack Sub guy was like, yeah, I'm, I'm even, I'm contemplating it now. You know, and it was, fuck you for that, Tom Scott. To the sunset end this with a big syrupy sentimental self-indulgent montage and head off into the sunset and you know what just this once for the first time in 10 years that's exactly what i'm gonna do leaving his viewers teary-eyed tom scott created a legacy unmatched and never to be forgotten but he wasn't the only one matt pat the mastermind behind game theory gained popularity through his iconic YouTube series, which merged theory crafting and science with video games. His channel delved deep into theories of video games, the YouTube algorithm, and popular trends. He created his YouTube channel on August 22, 2009, wow. originally going by the name of Matthew Patrick 13, and featured clips uploaded by Patrick of him auditioning for, and performing in, various theater shows. This is because Patrick had been a performer and aspiring director prior to becoming a YouTuber. Oh wow, I had no idea. Patrick stopped uploading these clips in mid-2009, and no new content was added to his channel until April 14th, 2010. Matthew, what the fuck did I get too, uh, did I get too freaky for you? <laughs> did I get too freaky for you when you saw him on stage like that? It's just a play. Just a play, man. Relax, dude. <laughs> Calm down a little bit, man. When Patrick officially announced this to his channel on uploading these clips in mid-2009, and no new content was added to his channel until April 14th, 2010, when Patrick officially announced the series he was creating, called Game Theory. Over the next decade, Game Theory slowly built a fan base after getting featured on several websites, such as Reviewtopia and ScrewAttack, and started incorporating elements from MatPat's directing experience and fan submissions. This, along with a steady flow of new content being produced, kept the channel growing at a steady rate. However, this momentum saw an unexpected turn on December 20th, 2022, when MatPat announced that he had transferred the rights of all theorist channels to Lunar X. What? This pivotal decision was the first sign that something was about to change. And not even two years later, on January 9th of 2024, video of what time. some had feared happened. Matt Pat announced that the last video he would host would be two months later. I'm sorry, who is Lunar X? That's all I could think about right now. Elevating content, new creators. We invest in digital first content brands and elevate them into globally loved franchises. Oh, wow. Wow. Oh wow. So they kind of they bought them out essentially and are just running running this channels for him. It's genius. It's a genius play. Now he can just step back in depth like forever. Fucking game theory can go on for the next 50 years. Even longer. March 9th, 2024, hitting his viewers like a brick. 
I had to hold off on watching this video because of the impact it would have. We'll miss you, MadPat. You leave some huge shoes to fill. You will be missed. Like, missed a lot. Having built a very strong brand and community over the years, MadPat's exit from the platform will go down in the history books and will be remembered forever. Stepping back at the very top is a very pro-gamer move. But not every exit has to be a planned one. Sometimes, the best finale is a quiet one. Jenna Marbles first became oh, I thought they were going to put Corey Kenshin in here. How to trick people into thinking you're good looking, which gained over 5.3 million views in its first week posted. She quickly took advantage of this success, getting 19.7 million subscribers and becoming the second biggest female YouTuber, being beaten only by Mexican YouTuber Yuya. But there's only so much success you can get. On June 25th, 2020, Jenna uploaded a video titled A Message where she profusely apologized for her racism and internalized misogyny in her older videos and the harm she has caused to people. I'm not what? interested. What did you harm? I'm not interested in making anyone feel bad. That's fair. You haven't noticed. Jenna talks about changing and putting out genuinely non-offensive content though. and wholesome videos. She has even gone far enough to private and delete her old problematic ones. This is private. It has been private for quite some time. But it looks like this. <laughs> Although Jenna has addressed her past before and apologized, she decided to address her problematic past one more time before announcing she is either taking a break or leaving her YouTube channel for. I feel like when it's clearly a joke. Like, did you have to apologize for that, bro? Like. Like, not even just clearly a joke. Let me, let, that's not the right one. When it's like, you're not really, you're, you might, you may be being offensive, but you're not being offensive in a hurtful way. You know? It's not like you're out here just fucking shitting on people. Like, you're, you're playing off hilarious stereotypes. Since when can't we joke about other people's stereotypes? I feel like once you can't do that anymore... How are you gonna even talk to people, right? How are you even gonna like, you're, you're gonna be scared to talk to niggas at that point, bro. I swear to God, <laughs> you're gonna be like, bro, I don't wanna say anything wrong. I don't wanna like, I don't wanna like, if I say one thing wrong, they might take it offensive, bro. Because like, what? Come on. Ever in an attempt to reflect and distance herself from the past. And this couldn't have been a better time given she had just started facing backlash for videos containing slut shaming, derogatory language, and her impersonation of Nicki Minaj, after which many took her excessive spray tan as a version of blackface. This ended up working perfectly, as a lot of people have actually forgotten those controversies and now view her in a perfectly positive light, leaving all the bad events buried in the sand. But while Jenna Marbles exited out of fear, the next YouTuber quit to pursue something much bigger. Ooh. George Kusunoki Miller, known online as Filthy Frank, oh, shit. had his true start as an entertainer on YouTube through multiple channels that consisted of music videos, rants, ukulele performances, and The Filthy Frank Show, with most of the main characters played by himself. This included the main character, Filthy Frank, a persona who was described as the anti-vlogger of YouTube. The Filthy Frank character was created during his time on the Disaster Music YouTube channel, which has started gaining popularity in August 2011. He's also this guy. <laughs> Making it the first YouTube meme to go super mainstream. His other videos were known to push the extremes of YouTube, with examples like Vomit Cake, Worst Animal Rights Activist, and Rat Chef. It's, it's my mom's mom mess. Mess. serve dead rats to me. Now that's not just a fucking joke or something, Frank. No, it's my mom's recipe. Then, on August 15th, 2014, Miller uploaded a video announcing that he would not be posting any more video content onto the Disaster Music channel, under the risk of losing the channel due to the numerous copyright and community strikes it received. Uh. Three more years of Filthy Frank content then continued with the eventual transition to more and more music content. The final video was put out at the end of 2017, marking the end of Filthy Frank. What did he do after? While the majority of his fan base respected his decision, many still mourn the end of the character. What did he do? However, not every YouTuber stopped uploading. What did he end up doing after? You said he was gonna do something after. The end of the character. However, not every YouTuber stopped uploading for a good. 
music. Oh, he's a musician. Oh shit. Okay. Okay. I thought he went. I thought he went from music to Filthy Frank. No. I thought he was a a, a musician first, and then he went to Filthy Frank. Joji. He makes music under the name Joji. Oh, nice, nice. This is him? Oh, yeah. Oh, wow, he's out there, bro. Oh, wow. Okay. This is you! My God, this is you. You see his memes everywhere, dude. You like you see his his old memes everywhere, right? Where it's fucking he's putting the thing in the trash can and stuff. Wow, I did not know. I did not know at all. I did not know they were the same people. That's awesome. That's actually fucking. That's a great ending right there. Good reason. Dayon Scott Wilson Eason rose to fame for his videos revolving oh. around the Philadelphia Eagles. Oh. Many of which have been used in uh. games online. Oh. Oh. He was initially known only in the sports community for his rant videos. But since 2015, his popularity transcended much wider as he started uploading videos consisting of vlogs, cooking reviews, rants, and gaming. Now, several of his older and now deleted videos, such as I flooded the toilet in Chipotle and nearly sh myself at school, also experienced newfound popularity. Fans would, however, soon be disappointed to learn that their beloved YouTuber had a very- He called Gideon fat, black, and bald. I mean, are those, I feel like all those things are pretty true, right? So I don't think they should offend you. And I think all those things are also true about him. So I don't, <laughs> I don't understand the, <laughs> I don't think you should be offended by that. It's just a <laughs> disturbing side that would go much deeper than they could ever imagine. Beginning July 2020, rumors of EDP 445 having disrespectful and sexual conversations with minors surfaced. The same month, EDP 445 released a video that addressed the rumors and dismissed them as jokes. Now, most of his community actually thought nothing of it, with some claiming that it was just a Karen or group of them trying to take down his channel. However, not even a year later, Pretty EDP 445's ironic. Yeah, sure. downfall began with his appearance on Alex Rosen's channel, Predator Poachers, which specializes in catching files. That day, EDP 445 unknowingly posted his final video, in which he claimed he was on his way to get a cupcake, when in fact, he was on his way to meet a 13-year-old to establish relations with her. Alex confronted Dayon about the messages that were exchanged by a decoy who posed as a 13-year-old girl that contained sexual content and inappropriate pictures and soon posted the video online. In the days that followed the video going viral, EDP445 lost 10% of his subscribers, eventually losing all 2 million of them after YouTube decided to ban his account. But this was just the beginning of the end. His alternate income stream, Cameo, went up in flames following the situation. EDP 445 then attempted to create several accounts on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube, all of which would get deleted the second they got the attention of the authorities. In the months that followed, EDP 4 Like this case right here. EDP, his case right here is the definition. I swear, it's the, it's the product of incel culture. I'm going to just keep it a buck. That's how I really feel about it. I feel like incels always end up being predators. Right? I don't know how to put it. I just feel like they always end up being fucking predators. Niggas that just do not even try to get girls, right? And then say they hate women are always trying to prey on on things that are just on little kids that are easy to get. Right? When it's like, bro. <laughs> like I I don't or they're just gay, yeah. Or that too. Or that too. Or that, yeah. Or that. That's fair. That's fair. That's fair, man. 
That's fair. And I feel like if you just, you know, exercise a little bit, take care of yourself. And honestly, work on being alone. That's the bigger thing. If you if you if you can work on being alone and actually be fine by yourself, you'll be good in a relationship, bro. Like if you can actually be fine, like I'm Gucci on my own, nigga. I need nobody. Then you'll be great in a relationship. But if like you really can't, you end up like this, nigga. Then you hate women. I hate them all. Fuck it. Always lying about getting pussy. And this is what you're doing. This is what you're doing on your spare fucking time. Five managed to land a job as a Lyft, Grubhub, and Uber Eats driver. However, he would soon be fired from his job after trolls outed him as a predator online. He even tried his hand at Chuck E. Cheese, but for obvious reasons. Nigga, no, damn! Coming to terms with his situation, EDP applied for a name change. Chuck E. Cheese is crazy. <laughs> Out of all the places you want to apply for, nigga. Yeah, I got called for talking to minors. So let me pull up the fucking Chuck E. Cheese. Let me try to get a job at fucking Chuck E. Cheese, bro. Online. What? He even tried his hand at Chuck E. Cheese, but for obvious reasons, didn't get the position. Coming to terms with his situation, EDP applied for a name change in a Nevada court. But what good is changing a name going to do when you are as easy recognizable as he is? Facts. It wasn't long until EDP began living out of his suitcase and eventually seeing his life become a prison as trolls managed to expose him wherever he went. He went from having a huge YouTube following to creating his own living hell. And he wasn't the only one who dug his own hole of hate. Oimer Sastim, better known oh as Master Oh my Uber, god! Used the game through his self-titled channel. He published shorts in which he recreates the voice of They got you in here? This was made four months ago! What? Um, they knew. They were aware. These niggas see in the future, bro. They were... Oh, this ain't right, though. This ain't right. This ain't right. This is... This is the product. This, as you can see, dude, as you can see, when you play a voice character, and as soon as you show your face is where they start fucking you up, bro. That nigga should have stayed behind the turtle, bro. He should have stayed behind. The, he should have just kept being Master Ugwe, bro. They did the same thing to Dream, bro. As soon as you show your face, they on you, nigga. They on you. They, it's easy to be offensive if nobody knows what your face looks like. Because then what are they going to say? They don't know what you can be offensive if niggas don't know your face, bro. You can. You can do it all day long. They've never seen you. And and like they're not connecting it to anything. But as soon as you show your face, it's a wrap. <laughs> it's a wrap, dude. It's a wrap. Ugwe from Kung Fu Panda. If Fortnite is the game she plays, you shall bring her back to your place. After his face reveal, Sass team shifted from quote videos to reaction videos and memes. However, due to the supposed algorithm's problems, he temporarily quit YouTube, only to return to the platform days later on March 3rd, 2023. And thus began the saga of Ugwe's mission to quit YouTube, one in which he never managed to succeed. Five months later, on October 31st, 2023, YouTube suspended all of his channels from the YouTube Partner Program for reused content, which meant that he couldn't monetize any of his videos anymore. Sastim took to Twitter and tagged YouTube mid? to get his channels oh, remonetized. What, what, what makes a reaction video mid to not mid? I always had this question. What, what changes a reaction video from it's really good to, oh no, that? Like, what's the... Right. What what makes a good reaction video and what makes a bad reaction video? The atmosphere not speaking much. The least you can do is actually transform bad to no reactions. The reactions and how much better the viewing experience is. The reactions are genuine, funny. NBC talk, I guess, makes it mad. Just staring with no emotion. That's fair. Someone who pauses every two seconds. Fuck you, Gray. <laughs> Fuck you. You don't add substance to the reaction and pause too much. Fuck you too. <laughs> that, I, I see what you're saying. I see, I see your point though. I get what you're saying. <laughs> Was anymore. 
Sastin took to Twitter and tagged YouTube to get his channels remonetized. YouTube later responded by saying that his channels will remain suspended from the YouTube Partner Program. Three days later, Master Ugwe again announced that he would be quitting YouTube because of his content being stolen ideas. He ranted about being deleted off YouTube and getting denied from I the Partner Program. I remember this video. The very he got next it back, day, though. however, Master Ugwe said that he was no longer losing faith in YouTube as he got in touch with the company over his unfair demonetization and could rejoin the YouTube Partner Program under one condition he would remove the problematic videos. Okay. Since then, Sastin would feature in several shorts, talking about his work and why he quit, but always returning back. Ugwe's followers definitely had something to say about his quitting methods. I like how the whole video was him talking about himself in third perspective and saying how he left YouTube shorts while this is literally a YouTube short. How many times is bro gonna quit? It seems like with time, Sastin will lose a lot more than his reputation if he keeps up this loop of quitting oh, instead it, of actually quitting. He did. He did. You, Man, the fucking foreshadowing right here is mad. The foreshadowing right here is nuts. <laughs> Watching him lose his sanity in all logic in real time was kind of sad. Did he lose his sanity? We do not care. But what happens if your peak is so high, it can never be reached again? Dream was one of the fastest growing channels in the history of YouTube, getting over 10 million subscribers in a little over a year and averaging over 50 million views per upload, which had never been seen before. Over the uploads, he kept teasing his face reveal with multiple hints, but much to the annoyance never of his did fans, it, man. the never teasers did it. really didn't seem to go anywhere. Should have never done it, man. After years of speculation about the creator behind the mask and continuous delays, the Minecraft star who rose to fame as a faceless creator uploaded his highly anticipated face reveal on October 2nd, 2022, in a YouTube video titled, Hi, I'm Dream. Despite the high anticipation, the video was met with sarcastic reviews. It received a ton of mixed reactions, with the majority of its viewers beginning to make satirical memes about Dream's face. In the months following the face reveal... Should have never, bro. Should have staged your ass behind that motherfucking mask, nigga. What made you want to be known so bad, bro? Like, what made you want to show your... It's not. It's never that deep, man. I don't... I feel like you, had, you didn't need that, bro. What, what was the... What, what did the face add to it? You just wanted too much clout. That's what happened. His viewership dropped from an insane view average to as low as 5 million views. And while for many, getting that many views yeah, is the ultimate lot, goal, for Dream, it was soul crushing, making him take the face reveal video down on June 9th, 2023, only to make it public again a few days later once he realized there was no going back. Since then, Dream has decided to pursue music with the hopes of tasting such success again. And while this might still be possible, as he has many people rooting for him, the same couldn't be said for this next YouTuber. Stephen J. Williams, oh, man. otherwise known as Boogie2988, oh, started- Bro was in more controversy than, than a Family Guy clip. I don't like, bro is always in something, dude. I'm pretty sure he's in controversy right now for scamming his viewers over some crypto shit. Bro can just not get away from the controversy, dog. Making game-related videos, like, personal rambling vlogs, and character sketches. The most famous of which is his character, Francis. It's delicious! It's delicious! I don't want thing out! I want a Mountain Dew! Boogie began the channel on April 5th, 2006, and has been expanding since then. His first video was a 49-second clip titled, Playing Dungeons & Dragons. But it was only after making a video of his character Francis being hacked in World of Warcraft, where Boogie was given a shout out from Ray William Johnson, that caused him to have a boom in subscribers. For him, his account was hacked, and he's a tad bit upset about it. Sorry, but I've been crying a little bit tonight. I'm just really upset. I don't all know what to do. I'm just really upset. My fucking. My Warcraft account has been hacked. Boogie rode the wave of success following his viral exposure, with his channel subscriber count and view numbers steadily climbing. He became known not just for his character Francis, but also for his vlogs, gaming content, and discussions about life and health challenges. However, around 2017, Boogie's trajectory began to shift. The combination of personal struggles, including a public divorce, 
and increasing controversy tied to his online behavior began to tarnish his reputation among parts of his fan base and the wider online community. This period marked the beginning of a oh, slow decline that would eventually accelerate in October of 2022 when Boogie publicly stated he faced significant financial losses and challenges with monetization. Spent a tremendous amount of money on dumb, dumb things. But the biggest issue is that I had a nice big nest egg. I took some financial advice from a friend and I'm not pointing fingers necessarily. I took the advice, but I put my money in the crypto market in the wrong section and I pretty much lost most of everything. The video ended up being heavily criticized by fans and other YouTubers. As people Just letting you know, this man spent most of your donation money on female escorts. This is what happens when you when your audience grows up and isn't entertained by fat, angry man break stuff. Sorry, you have to work, man. We all do. That's what I'm saying, bro. Coming on the fucking internet, talking about your financial struggles like niggas give a fuck, especially when to them you look like you had it all, like you got it, like you're about to get. They're about to shit on you, bro. They're about to fuck. Get the fuck up out of here, fat man. Huh? You you got to sit behind a fucking camera and make all this money and now you're fucking crying about it? Get up out of here. thought he was just begging for money. They don't want to hear that shit. Videos as tiring. They don't want to hear that. Later, this narrative was further supported with the release of a documentary titled The Dark Sad Life of Boogie2988. It detailed Boogie's mental health, his downfall online, and his financial situation. Boogie admitted that he had a shitty. poor spending like habit, that. spending a thousand to ten thousand dollars on games, merchandise, and workers. Damn. Though he does make attempts to make up the money, such as selling his cards or attempting to get a job from an employment center. However, this attempt failed due to him being a felon and wanting to make content on YouTube instead. The documentary was praised for its editing and in-depth look at Boogie's life though he again ended up being heavily criticized for his covert narcissism, poor spending habits, and creepy feelings of women. Having sex with Boogie is one of the reasons I quit sex work. <laughs> the internet, man, these niggas are creative. <laughs> As everyone expected, Boogie didn't handle this criticism well. Their minds. Oh, are you trying to manipulate people into giving you money? The answer is yes. Give me some money. For most of his supporters, it. this was the final nail in the coffin, causing his income to drop even lower. There's only so much sympathy you can give to someone. He bit every hand that tried to help him earnestly and constantly falling back on, woe is me, I'm fat and sad, I'm the biggest victim on earth, shtick, whenever he hits a little wall. Boogie has made so many of these videos where he had an epiphany and nothing ever changes. Despite these millions of chances to accept reality, preserve the bit of goodwill he still might have and make a good final video, he keeps digging his hole even further. But what happens if it's life who decides your final video? Oh, no, Technoblade, do or oh, Alex, was well known throughout the Minecraft community for his incredible level of dedication and hilarious wit. Wait, 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 wait. give me a second here. I wanna, I have a cool trick that I can show you guys, all right? Plead your case. So basically, what I'd like to say is, you'll never catch me alive! I'm out of here! Ah! Yo! Wait, this is awkward. Yo! Unfortunately, all of this would soon come to an end as on August 27th, 2021, Technoblade uploaded a video titled Where I've Been, in which he revealed that earlier that month, he had been diagnosed with sarcoma. The reason my arm hurts is because I have cancer. That really couldn't have gone worse, I don't think. A rare bone and soft tissue cancer after feeling severe pain and swelling in his right arm. The cancer was detected early by doctors, and Techno focused on getting chemotherapy treatments. The day he shared his diagnosis was the same day his channel finally surpassed 1 billion video views, wow. making him one of just over 200 channels to have achieved that milestone. Six months later, on February 1st, 2022, Techno announced the start of the Minecrafters vs. Cancer fundraising event, which was also a response to his cancer battle. Multiple creators joined in by adding the fundraiser to all their videos, while Techno also posted the fundraiser on his streams. Hey, we hit the goal! Yay! Hey, yo. Awesome, man. Techno's battle with cancer would be short-lived, however, and he unfortunately passed away in June 2022. Soon after, years. a video was uploaded to Technoblade's channel titled So Long Nerds, in which his death was announced by his father, 
along with a short script written by Technoblade approximately eight hours before dying. If I had another hundred lives, I think I would choose to be Technoblade again every single time, as those were the happiest years of my life. I hope you guys enjoyed my content and that I made some of you laugh. And I hope you all go on to live long, prosperous, and happy lives. Because I love you guys. Technoblade out. In the weeks following Technoblade's death, hundreds of YouTubers released videos as tributes, with many of them continuing the spirit of the of Minecrafters Technoblade. versus Cancer. For sure. Have a moment, man. Have a moment. Seriously, no joke. No joke, man. This shit making me... It's... I don't know how we just went from boogie to that. That just it changed the whole fucking... Trajectory, like what the heck, dude? And happy lives. I wasn't ready. Because I love you guys. Technoblade out. In the weeks following Technoblade's death, hundreds of YouTubers released videos as tributes, with many of them continuing the spirit of the Minecrafters versus Cancer Initiative by making their video a fundraiser for the Sarcoma Foundation of America, showcasing Techno's legacy. Moreover, if you were to search up Technoblade on YouTube, there would be a prompt saying, did you mean Technoblade never dies? Making his final video one of, if not the most, impactful legacies of all time. Wow. Way to end, huh? <laughs> he's, he's found out about the ending on emotion thing and he's, uh, he's really pulled at it. I appreciate it.